I think maybe it would be interesting to, uh, uh, if we could kind of just go down the line and uh, if uh, we could get each of you to maybe give us a small anecdote or some thought about her that, that comes to mind. Maybe start with you, Sam. I'll try that. I'm the only man alive. <laughs> Which is questionable. That owes Charlie Parker money. <laughs> Chicago, we were doing a tour with Norman Grants. I had a date with the state of New York. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was a little short of money. Anyway. So Charles Parker went into his pocket and gave me money, $75. Never done before in the history of the world. <laughs> and I thanked him, but he kept my drums. <laughs> Does that mean anything? Anyway, to this day, I still own the 75 bucks, but I got the drums back. So it's kind of a minor miracle. He was a great guy. Loved him. Loved him. A bit bizarre, but I loved him. Did you love him? I didn't know him very well. I didn't know him. <laughs> One time, uh, my wife Joni and I were walking down Broadway in front of uh, Birdland, and this guy walked up and said, hey man, give me some, some money, will you? And I said, sure, and I gave him five bucks. And uh, Joni said, what would you give him that five bucks for? We only had ten bucks. And I said, that's Charlie Parker. And she said, oh. <laughs> so he had a certain charm, I guess. <laughs> and he, that's, that's amazing what, what he just said uh, about him on because he owed everybody, and not only that, he used everybody's horn in the world, you know, and he borrowed it and you'd never see it again. You wouldn't even see the pawn ticket anymore. <laughs> Somebody else might come up and say, hey, you want to buy the pawn ticket for your horn? That's about as close as <laughs> But uh, when I was on Paul Thornhill's band, we'd, uh, we'd uh, rehearse at Nolan's there in New York on Broadway. And uh, we'd come into town, and, and Gil Evans would walk in with a chart. And he came in with this chart that was in the key of A or D or something. Idiotic. <laughs> it was just terrible, you know. And it's supposed to be real beboppish, you know. And I'm playing clarinet. And if anybody there plays clarinet, it's back and forth over the hump with double fingerings and all that stuff. And it's supposed to be just like it's coming right out of your head, you know. And it's impossible. So we'd be running over this thing, and I'd be struggling, and uh, we'd only do one chart at a rehearsal when it was killed, because you had to, they were always hard to play, but terrific charts. And uh, so after about an hour and a half, Bird's sitting back in the back of the room, you know, just kind of sitting there, and you didn't see anything, no emotion at all, you know. And then about an hour and a half later, he'd start, you know, like a rat in a maze, sooner or later, you get hit, you know, so uh, we get it, and it sounded pretty good, and you see this big grin on his face at the back of the room, which made it all worthwhile somehow. But that's all I know about it. Except that I, for the past 40 years, I've been writing his choruses out and harmonizing them and copying them and rehearsing them so that uh, you folks out there can uh, and hear a bunch of guys struggling trying to find our way through that stuff. <laughs> and the eyes are gone and the brain is gone, but we'll, we'll keep doing it through tonight anyway. 